uh, we will discuss uh, the physics AS long practical uh, actually this is paper 3 this comes in physics paper 3 it can be either 32 or 33 it comes in paper 3 and this is of total 20 marks question it's a long practical and it's one hour uh, the main things for the AS long practical are first uh, there's the table you have to make a table table and setting of the apparatus it is usually of 10 marks and then the graphical work graph gradient and y intercept is of 6 marks and calculation is of 4 marks so I will discuss this in 3 uh, main ways the table graph and calculation this for the AS long practical the also there will be is short practical is short practical I will discuss uh, later on what will be in the AS short practical uh, but this is for AS long practical before going in detail for the AS long practical I tell you uh, it is not the practical which you should be doing exact but it's those are the rules which you have to follow by following the rules always you can gain good grades uh, in the AS physics practical now let us see before going to de in detail the rules I'll first define a few terms first is what is the uh, what we call the independent variable what is the independent variable and what is the dependent variable you must know these few terms What is the independent variable and what is the dependent variable? Now, independent variable is the, actually in physics as practical, you always have to investigate about two factors. One of them is independent variable and the one is the dependent variable. Independent variable that which is in your control. You can vary it by yourself. And dependent variable it is not in your control and depends upon depends upon independent variable now let us see for example Although there is some control of variables, but that comes in A2. I will not discuss control of variables or constant factors over here. Uh, now, suppose it is said you have to investigate how time period of a simple pendulum varies with its length now first of all this is the suspension point this is the length of the pendulum length of the pendulum is from point of suspension up to the center of the bob this is the length of the pendulum now he says how time period of a simple pendulum first of all time period means it is a complete round trip time period means suppose if this is the equilibrium position it goes up to here at extreme position A it comes here at B now uh, actually this is it goes here it comes here it comes here and it goes here this is one oscillation now time period T is actually it is the time from suppose I can say O to A O to A to O O to B and B to O again or if I start from A A to O O to O to B, B to O, O to A. This is time period. Now time period is usually denoted by capital T. Because so many practicals of the oscillation, we denote time for 20 oscillations. This is another thing. Time for 20 oscillations. We denote time for 20 oscillations as 20 T. 20 T, not denoted by T, just denoted by 20 T. 20t is 
easy to remember 20 into time period or time for one oscillation. T is any time, it can be for and 20 oscillation, can be for one oscillation. T is denoted in AS or physics practicals for any other time, but capital T is for time period. So when I say 50 T, 50 T means time for 50 oscillations. 10 T means time for 10 oscillations. 5 T means time for 5 oscillations. Because time for one oscillation is very small, uh, so we usually take the time for 20 oscillations and then divide it. So this is the now. Let us see what is the independent variable here and what the dependent variable here. This is how time period of a simple pendulum varies with length. Now what is in your control? You cannot vary, uh, suppose you are saying I am taking the time period of the symbol, you can vary the length. So length here is the independent variable, length n is the independent variable. And time period T is the dependent variable. Take another example. For example, when it is says, uh, if you are investigating the resistance, it says resistance depends, resistance depends upon length of the wire. Now, what is the independent variable and what is the dependent variable? Length of the wire is in your control, so this is independent. And resistance is what? Dependent variable. So, uh, for these two terms, independent variable, dependent variable, uh, it is very much clear. Independent variable is that variable which is in our control, and dependent variable is the variable which is not in our control and which depends upon the independent variable. Uh, this is for the independent dependent variable. Let us see and other things which we need. Uh, other thing is the raw data. What is the raw data? Actually, raw data is just the reading the readings of independent and dependent variables. Those are the readings of the independent and dependent variables, or I can say, the uh, which you obtain from instrument Wa uh, readings obtained from instruments. That is the uh, raw uh, raw reading in which you obtain from the instrument, or that the readings of independent and dependent variable. In raw data, we always take care of number of decibel places. So in raw data, we'll be thinking about the number of decibel places. In raw data, we'll be thinking about the number of decimal places. Then there is known as another thing, process data process data or calculated data. Clearly process data or calculated data is that one which is obtained from raw data by calculations. Wherever calculator is involved or you are doing calculation becomes the process data. In process data we take care of significant figures. In process data we take care of significant figures. So what is the raw data or that is the process data? Raw data is obtained from the instruments and we always take care of the number of decimal places for the raw data and from process data or calculated data it is obtained from the uh, calculation of the raw data and we take care of the significant figures in the raw data. Again I explain what are the number of significant figures and what are the rules for the significant figures. You must know this, this is the basic things for practicals and rounding off also. 
Let us see what are the significant figures. Now significant figures, significant figures, if I say significant figures, actually there are two basic rules for significant figures. I can say digits from 1 to 9 all are significant. When I say digits from 1 to 9 all are significant, for example, I say 236 has 3 significant figure. 4.56 has 3 significant figure. When you go for the significant figures, do not look for the decimal places, just carry on. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. I can say suppose 3.867 has 4 significant figures. Now rule number 2. Rule number 2, it is the, uh, it is for zero. Zeros are sometimes significant and sometimes not. Zeros are significant sometimes uh, not. So let us see when the zeros are significant. Uh, first is zero if the zeros are to the left axiom position, zeros to the left axiom position are never significant. Uh, zeros to the left x in position are never significant. For example, I can say 0, 0, 0, 7, 3 has only two significant figures. 0 0.00263 has three significant figures. See, these are not significant, these are not significant. A, this is the zeros to the left x in position are never significant. Uh, part B is Z in between are middle zeros. Middle zeros are always significant. For example, I can say 406 has three significant figures. This is zero in middle. I can say 2.056 has four significant figures. I can say 0 0.0003025 has four significant figure. These are not significant figure, this is significant. So these are these are the parts of the zeros, whether the zeros are significant or not. Let us go for the C part. Now C part is actually it is for the right extreme zeros. For right extreme zeros, uh, suppose if a number is a whole number, then zeros to the extreme right may or may not be significant. And it is up to you. Actually, this is an ambiguous case and must be avoided by the student. If examiner gives it, it means he is lenient while marking in for the significant figure. For example, it is suppose 65,000. Now, suppose some student says it has, may have two significant figures. He is right. He is taking just these two as two significant figure. And some student says it has three significant figure. He or she is also right. Some students say it is four significant figure. He is also right. And some say he has suppose five significant figure. He is also right. If you write in this way, six point five to ten power four. Now there is no ambiguity. It has two significant figure. If you write in this way, it has three significant figure. If you write in this way, it has then four significant figure. And if you write in this way then it has five significant figures. So significant figures, when a number is a whole number, is an ambiguous case, 
the zeros may be significant or may not be significant. Right? But if a number is in decimal fraction, as the last part of the significant figure, if a number is in decimal fraction, then right extreme zeros will be significant. For example, I can say 4.50, now this is zero significant figure, it has three significant figures. I can say suppose 0 0.00320, it has, these two are not, three are not significant, this is significant, it has three significant figures. If it is suppose 0 0.002040 has four significant figures. So these are the basic rules. Again, I repeat, significant figures, digits from one to nine are significant. Then it comes zero. When it comes zero, left extreme zeros are never significant, middle zeros are always significant. The right extreme zeros may or may not be significant. Figure. If the decimal fraction, right extreme zeros are must to be significant. But if it is whole number, then it's up to you whether you take the significant figures or not. I hope you know the rounding off, um, and that's a very basic thing. Rounding off is also used in physics practicals. But I am not going to teach it because I think you know it is very primary thing, you know it very well.